Of course, uh, the pictures uh, of the crash uh, are spectacular, and uh, it is very sad that uh, lives were lost uh, in uh, the incident. In terms of direct impact now on trade, I mean, first of all, there uh, are the containers on the ship uh, which uh, caused uh, the accident. Uh, we have some containers on that ship, so we are, first of all, working with customers uh, to see how we can recoup those containers. Looking beyond the directly impacted ship, um, there were no container ships stuck in the harbor in Baltimore. And of course, incoming ships are now being rerouted. So the biggest impact uh, which is currently foreseen is uh, particularly on uh, vessels which uh, carry cars. Um, those are very specific ships, uh, roll on, roll off um, uh, uh, types of ships. Uh, and here one big ship is actually stuck in the harbor that will create a bottleneck. Uh, and there's also a tightness in capacity with those uh, specific vessel types. So with regard to the container part, um, mm. it's uh, probably going to be relatively limited in impact, uh, but it will have implications uh, for the automotive sector. Uh, interesting. How long do you expect those, those implications to last? Is it, is it possible to give a timeline around this, Melanie? Well, I think, I mean, generally, when you take a bigger um, uh, picture at uh, what is happening with regard to uh, supply chain disruptions, I mean, you already mentioned uh, in the intro uh, the Red Sea situation. Over the last years, we have seen profound shocks to supply chains um, under COVID, um, uh, with a, a ship stuck in the Suez Canal, now with the Red Sea situation. And yes, that always causes temporarily pressure points uh, to global supply chains. But we have also seen mm. that those supply chains are much more resilient than some expect on the first glance. They are always workarounds. And I think that is also where we as a logistics company are actively working with our customers to find solutions. When you look at the Red Sea situation, yes, when it happened um, uh, at the end of last year, uh, that of course caused delays, um, but now the shipping lines have adjusted schedules, workarounds have been found, and goods are flowing again. So a short-term mm. shock, a disruption is always a stressful situation for, a uh, for the system, but I think overall the supply chains are so strong and connected and reliant that workarounds can be found normally in a relatively short time frame. What, what does that mean then for your outlook for, for freight rates, Melanie? Yes, I think as we always see, when there is a disruption and the supply demand balance uh, is out of back temporarily, that can lead uh, to short term spikes uh, in rates uh, that uh, sometimes leads to surcharges. Um, but uh, we will also see that over time things will normalize. So particularly with regard to the Red Sea situation, I really would not over exaggerate it. Yes, there is now a longer time around um, uh, the Cape um, uh, for ships um, that is leading to some extra costs, that is increasing freight rates. Uh, but I don't think this is kind of like the medium term fundamental uh, uh, game changer. So shocks create mm. imbalances that leads to temporary uh, price uh, effects. Uh, but over time, uh, things then uh, tend to settle often much faster than what people expect.